Well, howdy friends, Brian Fleshing a matter of Outfitters in the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools, and welcome back to another one of our fly tying tutorials. It's winter 2024, and uh, just a couple of quick updates. Uh, I've been working on a project for about seven or eight months now. After about 40 plus years, I'm finally getting my fly box game together, believe it or not. Uh, you know, for years and years, people have always uh, chimed in with questions for us here on the YouTube. How do you organize your fly boxes? And I've always answered that I, I have no idea. I'm, I'm a god awful mess. Um, and I know a lot of people are in the same boat, but I, I set a goal uh, to get my fly boxes together. But one box I've been working on recently uh, here this winter is Sculpins. And sculpins, are, of course, are very, very important bait fish for us here uh, for trout and for smallmouth. Uh, but I also use them in other places. They're important when I go out to Montana in the summer. Uh, so having my sculpin box together well, was really important. This just came together. Some of them I have bought and some of them I've tied. Uh, <clears throat> and what I want to do is kind of start a little mini series here. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to tie the ones that I have tied here. Uh, now, forgive me, I have not given these names, uh, and a lot of times I hesitate to give a fly a name because I'm probably not gonna sell it commercially, number one, and then number two, uh, I, I always feel guilty giving flies names because for the most part, I've stolen um, the majority of that fly from somebody else somewhere along the way. So um, <clears throat> this is sculpin number one, we're gonna tie that guy today. Super simple fly. This fly here, which I kind of came up with, I think it's a kind of a take on a fly called the Sculpzilla, uh, which is uh, I saw somewhere along the lines. A sculpin tied with a fish skull from Flyman Fishing Company. Uh, it's also kind of got the trailer hook in the back, no main hook, so it's, and I, I use backing to make the, the extension on that one. So we'll show you that one. And then I think the granddaddy of them all, of course, uh, you know, this is a, a Blaine Chocolate Game Changer platform, but I kind of came up with this uh, Game Changer sculpin that I'm really, really excited about. I can't wait to fish this one. So we'll kind of wrap up the series by showing that one to you. Some other ones that I carry with me, Dave Whitlock's Near Enough sculpin. I've been selling that fly for probably 40 years. Um, uh, some of the Flyman Fishing Company, just the rabbit strip, the smaller sculpins. Sometimes the fish want something a little smaller. So <clears throat> we'll, we'll give you an overall tour, but today we're going to tie, we're going to call this sculpin number one. And uh, this is basically a take on Mike Lawson's Woolhead sculpin. Uh, just a couple of things that I do differently. And uh, uh, first and foremost, it's going to ride upside down where his original road hooked down. This is going to ride hook up. And then I'm going to show you kind of a cool technique that makes uh, forming a wool head super easy. And we're going to use some UV epoxy. So uh, let's jump right in. Um, and first and foremost, I'm using a size four, three extra long streamer hook. And, you know, it doesn't matter the brand. I, I like these Umqua U series because they're cheap. Uh, you can use Tiemco or Daiichi or any brand, 3X, 1X strong streamer hook. So I'm going to put that in the vise as I normally would. And then I'm going to use, uh, uh, I'm also not a thread guy, so really whatever thread you have, uh, it's not really going to be seen by the fish. Um, but this UTC, the Ultra Thread 140, is what I'm going to use here. And uh, the brown, olive, black, whatever. And I'll just go ahead and lay a thread base as I do on virtually every fly I tie. Wrap it back to the bend of the hook and trim that, trim the excess there. And then we're going to weight this fly. And we're going to we're going to weight this in two steps. And the first step is going to really ensure that this fly rides hook up. So what I'm going to do is take a strip of lead wire. This is 0 0.030. And I'm going to measure the hook shank's worth. Okay, so I'm going to measure that hook shank. I'm going to come in with my heavy duty scissors. 
I'm just going to clip that. And then I'm going to lay this hook shank's worth of lead wire right along the top of the hook shank. And having it on top of the hook shank like that will help ensure that this fly flips upside down and rides hook up. Uh, there's another couple of things you need to keep in mind as you're tying the fly, but important to know that as it stands right now, we're tying this upside down. So I've just laid that right along top of the hook shank and lashed it in. And, and then I'm gonna take more lead. We'll take about two inches. And now I'm just gonna, in the kind of the front, say, third of the fly, I'm just gonna wrap this around the hook shank as you normally would when weighting a fly like this. And again, I want it to be more towards the front of the hook. And I've maybe got about a quarter of the hook shank covered right there. All right, nothing, you see nothing technical here. Those of you that know me, I'm not a technical fly tire. But I kind of build a little ramp up to that lead, wrap through it, and then I'll build a ramp in the front, kind of smooth over that transition with my first piece of lead, build a ramp in the front, wrap my thread through it, and then back to the bend of the hook. So we're gonna use for the, for the tail of this fly, we're gonna use a Magnum rabbit strip. I like to use the Magnum, which are a little thicker, uh, a little thicker on the hide there. And <clears throat> there's just a little bit of a trick to, to putting this in. So I'm going to measure this, and I'm going to come up about a quarter of the way up the hook shank, maybe a pinch more than a quarter. And then I'm just going to roughly measure this, and then I'll trim it. And I want it to be... Uh, it's maybe right at about two inches or so. Okay. So remember that this fly, again, is going to ride like this. So we're going we're gonna to install this with the, um, with the hide up. So here's what I do. I take, I take the hook out of the vise. And then kind of remembering my measurement there, I'm just going to pierce the hide I pierce the hook right through the hide and then I put the hook back in the vise and I just leave it hanging there. Okay. Now we're going to take some uh, ice dub in the olive color. This pack of ice dub looks like it was from 1962, but it goes a long way. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to throw some dubbing on my thread here. And that same approximate quarter of the hook shank, get that out of the way. I'm just going to dub that ice dub right up, maybe a pinch more. You can always put more, this is not critical and it's also probably not gonna be seen by the fish, but I think it kind of creates an impression. So now I take this piece of rabbit and you'll see that I've got this little strip here that's in front of the bend of the hook. I'm gonna slide that right up until it butts right up against my dubbing. And now you're going to tie this in on the underside of the hook shank. It's a little bit tricky but I tie it in so it's on the underside of the hook shank. And there, your, your tail is in place. Now, again, if I wanted to, I could put a little bit more ice dub in front of that. Kind of creates a little bit of a, a little bit of a belly to the fly. So there's your tail. And obviously when that hook rides, 
the hide is going to be towards the bottom of the stream and the rabbit strip over top. Now, we're going to take a cross-cut rabbit strip. Um, cross-cut rabbit strips are um, theoretically better for wrapping or palmering around a hook uh, than a standard straight cut. Straight cut is cut with the direction of the hair. Cross cuts are cro cut across the hide, <clears throat> which gives them uh, the, this uh, kind of deal like, like a, a feather type situation. And then as you're wrapping it, they tend to lay back a little bit better. And I'm just going to take that and tie it right in with the hair facing the proper direction. <clears throat> Make sure to get it lashed in. And now I'm going to bring my thread forward to maybe just right in front of where my lead wrap was. Okay. And now, <clears throat> if I remember correctly, I think I take about five turns of this. So there's one. And then as you're wrapping the cross cut, I'll just kind of stroke the, the fur back so I'm not trapping too many fibers there. And I'll get one more. and then tie it off. So I'm holding it here, one, two, three. Um, this is why I do like to use this 140 denier thread, the alter thread on this fly. <clears throat> Wrapping this rabbit strip and such, uh, you wanna be able to put quite a bit of tension on there. So <clears throat> if I didn't have my proportion just right, because remember we're gonna put, we're gonna put in yet a a hackle feather, we're going to put in some pectoral fins, and then we're going to use uh, sculpin wool for a wool head. So we can always wrap back over that rabbit strip, no problem, to adjust for our proportion here. And I also don't mind building up a little bit of a, little bit of a, a head there that's going to give me a better foundation. <clears throat> okay, um, for, for this hackle feather, and then also for the peck fins, I'm using the Whiting Coke de Leon. And um, this is the speckled, uh, I, I believe they call it olive. You can use really any hen, and this is Coke de Leon hen saddle. You can use really any hen. You can use the Indian hen feathers, although they, it's hard to get them big enough. Um, you could use just any kind of modeled hen saddle feather. Uh, you can use the Grizzly hen saddles. Those are kind of cool and relatively cheap. I tie uh, a, lot of, a lot of these flies, uh, and uh, also I tie a lot of soft tackle type flies. So <clears throat> I go through these Coke de Leones. I, I love them. They're just really buggy looking, and, and they, quite frankly, they last me a good long time. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is tie just a hackle feather in. So I'm going to grab one of the larger feathers, okay? I grab one of the larger feathers, and I forgot my little, I forgot my little tweezers. H hold on one second, okay? Um, turn on some music or something. I'm going to run out to the store here and grab myself a pair of tweezers. I forgot to bring them. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that, but I forgot my Dr. Slick Bishop forceps. And <clears throat> I tie tons and tons of soft sackles. I use a lot of this Coke de Leon hen saddle partridge. Um, and this is a trick that Davey Watton uh, taught me many, many years ago. And <clears throat> I had always tied in hackle feathers like this by the stem, by the butt. Well, Davey taught us um, to grab onto, and these, these uh, bishop forceps are perfect for this. You can grab onto that stem at the tip, and it kind of creates a little triangle, if you see there at the top. So again, these bishop forceps allow you to get in there, grab onto the very tip of the stem, and then I just stroke everything backwards, creating myself this little triangle. Now, I can just lay that triangle right on the underside of the hook shank, and tie the, tie the feather in. And what this does is by <clears throat> when I start to wrap this feather, the shorter fibers up at the top of the feather are on the underside. And then as I wrap, 
the the fiber the barbules are getting longer and it's going to create for a better foundation underneath and better action if you do it the reverse you've got the longer barbules of the feather are underneath and then the shorter over top which can kind of trap it down and prevent it from creating as much action as you want so um, i'm just going to simply start to wrap this feather one turn in front of the other and each time I do that I stroke these barbules back kind of splay them out so they splay around around the hook shank and I'll get about three or four turns uh, maybe we'll go one more and you see I used up the better part of that feather now I'm almost at the head uh, I'm almost right at the at the very tip of the fly here and that kind of slipped out on me but there we go but again I can always wrap back over this okay and in fact we, we want that because we want it to lay back and there's one stray you see here I'm just gonna fold that back and then I'm gonna wrap my thread back again going back quite a ways because we're we still have to put the pectoral fins on here and we still have to put uh the wool head on here and probably leaving myself uh uh maybe about a quarter of an inch there still now we're going to use the same coque de leon uh, for the pectoral fins i'm just grabbing a couple of feathers that are similar in size and shape and then what i'm going to do is kind of measure now you want these to be fairly prominent you want them to be a little bit exaggerated a lot a lot of times i see people doing these and they they go on the smaller side and by the time you get the fly finished you can't even see the peck fin so we want them to be pretty exaggerated and pretty prominent so i'll kind of measure and i want it i probably want it to extend back about to the bend of the hook believe it or not and then once i get that measurement i'm just going to strip off all of the barbules behind that and then I can make a cut okay so there's my peck fin now my second one I can come in and simply measure right up against it strip all the barbules going back and then come and make a cut okay so there's my perfect peck fin now, you know that feathers have a concave side and a convex side. We're going to tie these in with the convex side, or excuse me, the concave side out facing me so that the feather, that, that natural curvature, so that it curves out and gives you that really prominent peck, peck fin look that a sculpin has. Okay, so I'm going to lay that right along the side of the hook shank. I'm going to lash it down and it rotated on me. You have to just be careful that it doesn't rotate. Hold it in position and there we go. And then I'll take this one again. Concave side is now going to be facing you going that direction try to match them up so they're fairly even and again boom try to get it so it doesn't rotate on you and those peck fins are in place and now <clears throat> what I can do is remember again this is going to be the uh, this is the bottom of the fly so I can I can take my glue I'm using this Loctite super glue I'll put a little drop of super glue right there and then right here and that's going to help to lock that in position and now I'm going to pull that feather down ever so slightly so it's more prominent uh, when the fly is riding here and then I'll just take a couple of wraps back over it So what I did was just pull those feathers down. So again, when I when I flip it like this, you see that they're more prominent and sticking out. Okay. 
And really, my last step is now going to be to add some sculpin wool at the head. And I used to fuss around with this a lot and uh, always used to kind of be a pain, but, uh, and, and I'm not sure if I came up with this. I might have seen it or maybe I dreamt it or something, I don't know. But I'll take, I'll take a clump of this sculpin wool and I would say maybe about half the diameter of a pencil. If I, if I feel it here in, in between my thumb and my first finger, it's about half the diameter of a pencil, about yay much. And once you tie a couple of these, you'll get the hang of it. There's, there's nothing to it. And then I'm going to trim that off the hide fairly close to the hide. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to use, I'm going to start with the blunt end that I just trimmed. Okay. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this in position, however far I want it to extend back, which is just slightly slightly into those pec fins, okay? And then I'm just gonna push it, push it around the hook shank. And now I'm gonna make one turn, two turn. Should be good. Now, I'm gonna rotate my vise, uh, and anytime you're rotating a vise, remember you you, you could lose a wrap of thread. So I'll take that one additional wrap of thread, which I just lost by rotating. And now <clears throat> I'm simply gonna take this clump right here, I'm gonna fold it back, kind of splay it around also the, the top of the hook, and then I'm gonna start to take wraps to kind of push it back. And with the hook going this direction, and with, with all this stuff at the head, it, it can be easy for this thread to slip off. So it's very, very useful if you, if you wrap up real close right here. This is why I like these, these shorter blunt nose bobbins. And I'll start, I'll just keep wrapping, wrapping backwards a little bit to push that clump of sculpin wool backwards a little bit. And that's it. I'm gonna finish my thread. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna flip this over again so it's easier to, to whip finish. Uh, I'll just go ahead and whip finish with my fingers. There's one. Cinch that down. I'll put two. Now, it doesn't look all that great right now but I'm going to show you this trick which is going to really make this head look like a sculpin or sculpiny <clears throat> one of my favorite pieces of gear right here and it's maybe your cheapest piece of fly tying equipment uh, but these are just uh, uh, popsicle sticks uh, with a piece of the male side of Velcro and I use this for oh my gosh for all kinds of different fl flies for brushing things out and I I'm just going to lightly brush that sculpin wool back kind of even it out okay so again remembering that uh, I I've now rotate the fly, the vise back around. So this is now the underside of the fly, okay? And here's the trick to get this, this head in a nice shape. And it's, I'm using the, the U, Loon UV clear fly finish in thin. And I'm simply gonna put a dab right where the thread, where the thread heads end, ends and into the sculpin wool. And then I'll put a little bit over the thread to help secure the thread. And I'll kind of try to create that kind of rounded shape of a sculpin head. And then don't let it go with your left hand. And then hit it with your UV light. 
and it should hold that sculpt and mold right in place then. Really kind of cool trick and kind of revolutionized how I do wool heads. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and to further add some durability to this fly and to further ensure that it rides hookup, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit more of the UV extending back to create a nice kind of hard underside to this head. And it just adds a little bit of durability and again, a little bit of extra weight on that underside which should, again, help that fly to ride properly. Hit it with your UV light. Then I'll flip her over. And again, this is where you get that nice kind of flattened head shape out of this. Just kind of manipulate that wool. Come in with my epoxy. And kind of get the base of the shape right up next to the thread and then a little bit over top of the thread. And I'll kind of try to marry it with that underside there. There we go. Again, I'm holding it in place while the UV cures. And just a few seconds there. And there's your sculpting head. <clears throat> My last step is I'll take a pair of curved scissors. I'll just kind of come in and make a couple of cuts. You don't want to go crazy. Making sure that you don't trim your pectoral fins or any of that hackle feather that you tied in. Just kind of give it a little final definition of shape. You don't want to trim too much because remember you didn't put all, all that much wool on there to begin with. So I have certainly trimmed these to the point where there was nothing left. And pull out some of your strays if, if you need to. You can come in with your, your handy little popsicle stick, kind of brush it out a little bit. And uh, there you have it. That's it. Sculpin number one. Again, kind of loosely based on Mike Lawson's wool head sculpin, uh, which we sold here for years and years and years. I caught a lot of fish on that fly, both here on the Mad River and out west. And uh, I think it was discontinued by Umpqua Feather Merchants. So I thought to myself, well, I'm going to need some. So I kind of playing around at the vice one night and came up with the idea of just making it ride hook up and uh, just played around with uh, with making wool heads I think a little bit easier I think you will too once once you get in there and play around if you wanted to you could glue some eyes on there I don't think it's necessary but uh, so there you have it super simple just a handful of materials uh, you got some ice dub you've got some sculpting wool Crosscut rabbit strip, magnum rabbit strip, and some sort of speckled, preferably speckled or grizzly hen saddle feathers. And of course, um, you know, UV finish. I, I, I think I put this on virtually everything that I tie these days. It's, it's amazing. I don't know what we did without UV. So anyway, friends, um, there you have it. Uh, you can always find the recipe uh, for this fly over on our blog and um, with links to where you can buy all this stuff and stay tuned because I'm going to continue uh, to tie some sculpins and then we'll keep going through fly boxes uh, we'll keep going through some patterns and uh, you know we're really going to do quite a bit of fly tying here in winter of 2024 so as always friends thanks for watching we appreciate the support that really means a lot to us. Be sure to subscribe to our channel. It's free, and that way you don't miss an episode. Hit the like button. That just makes us feel good. And oh yeah, you should watch this video right here. It's pretty good. That one, that one right there, that one's really good. So thanks as always, friends, and stay tuned.